Good evening, everyone. How are you? Hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Almost Friday. Friday. Good evening, teacher. Hi, how are you, Jorge? Happy to hear that. Almost yes. Friday. It's Friday. Thursday is Friday's Eve. <laughs> Vispera <laughs> de Viernes. That's what we call it now. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. It's kind of kind of busy, but it's okay. The day is is faster than the traffic has been terrible these days, like crazy, right? Definitely. After and, the storms. <laughs> yes. And the next week is October. This Saturday is October already. The day after tomorrow, yes. it's already October. We have one more week tomorrow and one more week. And then I believe there will be another teacher for Monday and Tuesday for the last two classes. But I'm not sure, so they will let you know. <laughs> also, Goodbye, they told teacher. me uh, because I have I had a trip planned a few months ago, and I'm leaving on Monday, like at 5 a.m. So I won't be here those those two days. That's the issue. If they reschedule them, probably I could. But yeah, those two days I'm not gonna be here. That's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a special question for tonight for the random topic, right? And then we're going to talk about what are the five most important decisions, what are the five most important decisions in a person's life? This is a general question. Remember, this is an open topic, right? What are the five most important decisions in a person's life, according to you, right? Why why fight, teacher? I don't know. That's the that's the way they put the question there. <laughs> I, I don't think know. it's is a lot of important decisions. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's yes, there are many important, but this one says the most, the five most that you consider the most important decisions. I don't know. I think I think what are you going to study when you finish high school? Remember that remember that period of your life when you finish high school and you don't know what you're going to study or if you're going to continue studying, right? What to do the, with the life? <laughs> the first one is to choose the the career. To choose the career, yes. What are you gonna do with your life? <laughs> uh -huh. That's a, that's one of the most important decisions, right? Yes, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at that time. Exactly. Other could be when you are in the studying and in the meantime, there are many dif dif difficulties to overcome and you have to make some decisions that could change all the, the way that your life. To continue or to give up. <laughs> yes. That's one, that's, very, that's a strong decision, yeah. I have met people that they fin almost finished their careers, like one subject. They, all, they only needed to pass one more subject and they stopped, they give up. One subject before they can graduate and they give up and they never finish. So yeah, those decisions, <laughs> really important. I, I, I believe other decision, uh, very important would be when people stop to drinking or smoking. Wow, yeah, that's a huge, huge decision. Mm -hmm. to, be, yeah. to give up, to give up on a bad habit, right? Or an addiction, to give up an addiction. Yes, or if they had a, a sick that definitely has to make a, a decision about change some 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 issues mm -hmm. to change habits for example yeah yes that's one point believe it or not life as you were mentioning right life is full of decisions but some are more important than others um let's see we have three we have mentioned career choosing to give up or continue when you find difficulties and then we said to give up an addiction, right? You have three. 
We're missing two more. What would be two more important, most important life decisions that you can think of? To choose to have kids. Wow, yeah. To choose to have kids or not have kids, right? If, if you are going to, to decide if get with get married. Yes. That's another one, yeah. Those two, I think those two are very similar, right? If you yes. decide to get married, then another another decision in life, do you have kids or do you not have kids? <laughs> like for example, my brother, my brother got married 11 years ago when he was, I think he was 22. My brother got married really uh -huh. young, but then they don't want to have kids. He and his wife, hell to the no. Nobody in my family has <laughs> kids. <laughs> Absolutely no kids in my family. So my parents are totally disappointed. <laughs> but but they have they say like they have to respect, right? They what it's whatever the people decide. So yeah, Diana, that's true. That's a very important decision. And we are missing one more. Let's see, what do you think could be another most important decision in life? The career you want to study? Yeah. That's, that was the first one we were mentioning. What career you're going, what are you going to do with your life? We were saying, <laughs> yes. Usually, I don't know if this happened to you guys when you were teenagers after high school that you didn't know what you wanted. Yeah. It happened to me. I, I wanted everything and I didn't want anything at the same time. <laughs> I didn't know what to study. And then I should have known. I come from a family of teachers. <laughs> The answer was right there, <laughs> but I didn't know at that time. So yeah, those are some of the most important decisions that we are faced day to day, right, in real life. Okay, and then let me just check if they gave us another. Well, <laughs> this is a very personal question. And it says, in your opinion, what is the best idea you have ever had so far <laughs> up until this point in your life? What is the, the best, best idea? What is the best idea you have ever had? It's difficult in Spanish and in English, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about what is the best idea you have had this year instead of ever this year, 2022. We are almost in October. What is the best idea you have had this year? Uh, in, in my case, teacher, I think the best idea was con continue building in, in, in my house a part that, that could be, that couldn't be used normally because we need to make a, a wall to can use them. Okay, to be and, able and to use it. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that was my Good. best idea for this year. Good, so it's better if we, if we reduce the time to this year, right? In my case, I think guys, probably the best idea I had this year was in February when I decided to apply for a different position in my other job, in my full-time job. And I was able to switch departments because I was in, in a very difficult and delicate area. But then I switched to this other one. It's also difficult, but it's not so delicate. So I, I can relax a little bit more. <laughs> I have peace of mind. So I think that was the best decision that I have had this year. The best idea I have had this year. What about you guys? I want to hear you. What is the best idea you have had this year? Let's um, see. I think the best idea I have this year, well, the last month, was to buy my own car. Is a goal that I have. And, well, with this, to, to stay in my job, too. <laughs> <laughs> it goes hand in hand. <laughs> That's a great idea, Diana, yes. But a car is a necessity these days. <laughs> Yes, that's a great decision. Let's hear, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Olga. Olga, what is the best idea you have had this year in your opinion? 
Are you there, Olga? Yes, teacher. Okay. Um, what do you idea. think? Mm -hmm. What do you think is the best idea you have had this year? Or the best decision you have made this year? Maybe studying English. Very good. Okay. Did you start this year, Olga? Which month did you start? When did you start? Um, the last year. All right. 2021. Okay. Yeah. So basically to continue studying English. Good. That's a that's a yes. wise decision. <laughs> nice. Thank you. All right. Let's see if we can hear um who do we have here? Manuel. Manuel, what is the best idea you have had this year? Or the best decision you have made this year? Can you hear us, Manuel? I don't see him in the camera, so I think he's not there. Let's see, Tatiana, can you hear me? Are you there? Teacher, teacher, yes. sorry. Hi, Manuel. Oh, I'm work. I'm still working. All right, no worries. No okay, worries. Thank you, teacher. I figured. Thank you, Manuel. Let's hear Tatiana. What was the What is the best decision you have made this year, Tatiana? I think I had two good ideas this year. Uh, the first idea it was when I decided to to take English class again because I have I have studied before. Um, this year I I decide to 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 come back. And the second idea it was um, start to to do exercise because. I I was very stressed, stressful or what is stress? The, stress. Uh -huh. I was stressed and and that was the second idea and and I never like to exercise but this time I have <laughs> you have been dedicated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Those are two very very good decisions, Tatiana. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Okay, you guys, yesterday, remember, we started unit three, we started talking about digital marketing, right? We started talking about digital marketing, and we were pending to do one exercise. We have it here in, in the student's manual, page 26, exercise number five. Can somebody please help me read the instructions? We need a volunteer to read the instructions here. Tatiana, please. Uh, yes, rank the advantages of direct di digital marketing, DDM, from one most significant to four less significant. From your perspective, what advantage helps online businesses attract more customers? Very good. Thank you, Tatiana. Okay, we need one, two, three three, four people that are gonna help me read. Each of you is gonna read one of the sentences, but we're not going to make an answer until we finish the four sentences, okay? After we finish the four completely, we are going to decide which one is more important and which one is less important, okay? So we need four volunteers, please raise your hand. Um, number one, it's going to be Wendy. Number two, Diana Elizabeth, please. Juan de Dios, help me with number three, please. And we have one more. I don't know who wants to read it. We have sentence number four. Silvia, please help me with number four. Let's begin, Wendy. Okay. DDM is targeted companies send specific, specific communications to a group or potential customer. Very good, thank you, Wendy. Number two, please. Yes. DDM is immediate. Since mobile users are almost always within arm's reach of their mobile device, your text or email message will be seen in more seconds. Mere seconds, correct. Thank you. Number three. 
GDMs allow to measure the success of your campaign, including the open rate of your message and the click throughout rate. That is the number of people who follow your link beyond their inbox. Thank you. And number four, please. CDM is cheap compared to yesterday's cost to of running a magazine or radio ad thanks to the ever expanding internet. It is cheaper and in some case free to get your brand's message out there. Very good. Okay. All of these ones that we have read, they are advantages. Advantages of direct digital marketing, right? Direct digital marketing, DDM. Each of them, it's an advantage. What the exercise is asking is that we decide which advantage is more significant and which one is less significant when we talk about uh, direct marketing, okay? Which one helps attract more customers in your, in your opinion, guys? Which of these advantages helps you bring more customers to your company? I think number two, this one helps bring more customers to your company. To me, that would be the first one. Do you agree or disagree? I agree teacher because uh, it says it's immediate. Mm -hmm. So it means that customers will go to your links or to your web page in the exact moment that you publish your, um, your marketing, right? Your advertisement. Which one would be the second most important advantage in your opinion? Let's see. Cheap compared. Okay, cheap compared to yesterday's cost for advertisement, yes. That could be the second one, right? This one immediate is the first one. Cheap could be the second most important, right? because we need money to make advertisements. So <laughs> if it's cheap, that's an advantage, right? A very important advantage. Which one would be number three in order of importance? Which would be number three in order of importance to you? That is targeted, que es, que es específica, ajustada a clientes, or is that it's, measurable, que nos permite medir resultados de éxito. Which one would be more important to you guys? The last one. Correct. That would be number three for me too. Yes. That you can measure. Que puedo medir resultados reales, right? Do I, is it a really good idea my advertising? Is people really going to the product that I'm selling? And number four would be targeted. Right? El hecho de que se pueda ajustar a un solo mercado, a un solo público, meta, it's a good advantage, but it's not the most relevant advantage, in my opinion. All right? So we agree. So in our opinion, we say immediate is the first one, like the most important. Um, the cheap part would be number two. Measurable would be number three. And targeted would be number four. Okay. Do we have questions in vocabulary, Ian? Repeat, please. Uh, more, more and less. Yes, number one would be immediate. Number two would be cheap. Number three, measurable. And number four, targeted. Thank you. Okay. All right, do you see any vocabulary, guys, that you want to check in this in this paragraph, in this exercise? Mere seconds. Mere seconds, meros, meros segundos. Yes. <laughs> meros segundos, yes. Um, measure. Sorry, repeat, please. Mere, meros, uh -huh. meros segundos. Meros, uh -huh. en meros, meros. segundos. Uh -huh. Como meramente. <laughs> Oh. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. mere seconds. Yes, meros segundos. Yes. 
It's new then, word for me in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, it's not so you. It's not so common, but it, it is. It does exist. <laughs> um, mes, measure, medir, measure, medir. Okay. And then, is measure puede ser medir resultados o puede ser medir algo físicamente. Um, a veces van a ver también la palabra medidas que se escribe parecido pero termina en ment. measurements, medidas, measure, medir, okay? And then we have the word targeted, targeted es que tiene un objetivo, que está enfocado a algo en específico, okay? Targeted. And then click through rate, esa es una palabra compuesta y aquí mismo explica qué es. Click through rate, the number of people who follow your link beyond their inbox, all right? La gente que interactúa con su comercial o con su anuncio más allá del correo electrónico donde cayó la publicidad, right? Que van a la página, que revisan su producto y a veces que lo compran, right? That's click through rate. And yeah, I don't, I don't see any, any other vocabulary word. All right. So, if you remember yesterday, we were talking about how digital marketing or marketing in general has changed from the 90s, the beginning of the 2000s, after 2010, and nowadays, right? 2020, after 2020, how much it has changed, okay? So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the breakout rooms and we're going to work in groups. You're going, you can go online. You can use Google, you can use any any link, any search that you need. And you're going to look for more information. And you're going to do a presentation. It's not a conversation. You need to do a presentation. It's an exposition that you're going to prepare in the groups. You're going to talk about the evolution of digital marketing from the 1990s to these days. If you can grab one specific company as an example, you can do it. And you can talk only about that company, how it began, how it was in the 90s, their publicity, their marketing, and how it's nowadays. If you wanna talk about a specific company, that's good. Or if you wanna talk in general, okay? Again, it's a presentation, it's an exposition. Try to prepare at least one or two images that you can present to the class and talk about them, right? You're gonna be working in groups of three to four people. So that this is, you can, everybody can help each other and make sure that everybody speaks, okay? And I'm not gonna say one person is going to read everything. No, every member of the group has to participate, all right? So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to begin preparing the presentation. Presentation of, of what? De lo que está acá, Wendy. You're going to talk about the evolution of digital marketing from the 90s to these days, okay? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the breakout rooms, la mayoría va a tener tres personas. Y si en alguno quedan de dos, me avisan para movilizar a alguien, que hay uno que va a quedar de cuatro. Other than that, we're going to have, tienen diez minutos a partir de este momento que se abren las salas. Cuando a los 10 minutos regresamos, revisamos el avance y vemos si se ocupa más tiempo o no. ¿Ok? You can go into the rooms right now. Hi, good evening. Hi, Silvia. La movilicé al room número dos. La voy a mover de nuevo. Okay. Todavía no acepte, permítame, le voy a avisar. Ahora sí.
José Jonathan va a estar como oyente, me dijo. Sí, Miss. Ok, va entonces está bien. Eh, Manuel también va a estar como oyente. María Concepción. María Concepción va a participar, le asigno una sala o... Teacher, aún estoy aquí, no he podido salir todavía. Ok, no se preocupe entonces.
Hello, Miss. Hello. Solo vamos a darles unos segundos antes de que todos ingresen a la sesión para revisar cómo van. Ok. We need 20 more seconds. Ok. Oh, no, this is you, Christy. You are not in a group yet. <laughs> Usted todavía no está en un grupo, ¿verdad? Yes, I'm en working el uno. with Ana. Ah, okay. with, no, with Mario. Norma. En Norma. With Mario en Norma. Okay, just three more seconds before everybody comes and we check. Solo okay. necesito que todos estemos en la misma página. <laughs> and there we go. Ya estamos ingresando todos. Okay, so I now that time, yeah, that's what I was about to ask you. Pero necesitaba que estuvieran yeah. todos de regreso. Do you need more time, a few more minutes, to complete the yeah, presentation? Yeah. Maybe, okay. maybe ten minutes, teacher. <laughs> All right, I can give you ten minutes. Just remember the requirements. Acuérdense de los requisitos. Cada participante del grupo tiene que hablar, tiene que dar algo de información, tienen que presentar imágenes si es posible. All right. And it's not a conversation, it's an exposition. All right? You have, le voy a dar los 10 minutos, ¿de acuerdo? Las salas están abiertas. Pueden reingresar ahorita. Nelson tiene que reingresar a la sala. Ahí está Olga y Silvia todavía esperándolo. Hi, Ana. Ahorita están trabajando en las salas. Están preparando una exposición. Eh, lo voy a compartir acá el, el student manual. La exposición es sobre la evolución. Evolution of digital marketing from the 90s to these days. Ana. Ok. Um, tenían dos approaches, dos acercamientos. ¿Podían hablar en general de cómo ha cambiado el marketing en, desde los 90 hasta hoy? O podían hablar de una empresa en específico y mencionarla como era antes, como inició y así como ha venido su publicidad hasta ahora. Um, no la puedo ingresar ahorita porque ya van, ya están hechos el grupo y llevan 10 minutos trabajando. Les quedan 7 minutos más. Si gusta, puede hacer algún ejemplo chiquitito, prepararlo nada más, ¿no? para que lo puedan mencionar al final usted, si le parece. Ok, teacher. Ok, se queda trabajando acá en la sala.
Okay, now that everyone is back, we're gonna begin. We're gonna start with room number one and we show Cristia, Mario, and Norma, room number one. You may begin, please. I <laughs> I gave you 10 extra minutes, guys. Not five, not six, I gave you 10 extra minutes. If you have not finished, try to improvise con lo que tengan, traten de improvisar. And let's hear your room number one. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Let me... We can share the screen. Yes. Voy a dejar de compartir yo y ahí pueden compartir ustedes. Cristian, Norma. I'm here, Cristian. Hola, hola, yo voy a compartir, pero, pero me estoy conectando de la compu. Deme un minuto. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait. Thank you. In the meantime, I'm going to take attendance, guys. So please be ready to say your name when you hear it. Give me just a moment. Let's see. Okay, we have Ana Raquel Villalta. Thank you. Today is Thursday, 29th. Okay, we go with Carlos Antonio. Claudia Maria Melendez. Present. Thank you, Diana Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you, Jorge Humberto. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Jonathan. Thank you, Jose Rodrigo. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present. Thank you, Juan de Dios Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you, Linda Ibet. Manuel Antonio Palma. María Concepción Cerón. Present teacher. Thank you, María Elena Guadalupe. Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gabarrete. Present miss. Thank you, Norma Carolina. Olga Present Marlene. Teacher. Thank you, Olga Marleni. Present teacher. Thank you, Silvia Suleima. Present teacher. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you, Wendy Maribel. Present. Thank you, and Christian Natalie. Present teacher. Thank you. All right, are we ready, Christian? Yes. Yes. You can begin, please. Okay. I don't know if you see my screen. Yes. Okay. This is the evolution of digital marketing. We have a little timeline about the marketing, the digital marketing. And we have uh, lessons now attempt to establishment, to establish a timeline here regarding the evolution of digital, of digital marketing. The digital era had already begun and now it had begun to evolve. In 1993, the first clickable banner was deployed. In 1994, cookies were invented by Low Monthly. These are small data packets created by the website servers when you browse a site. Uh, Ana Villalta continues with the next one. Uh, I am sorry, Norma. Okay, um, 
1996, new search engine in tours like Alexa, Luxmark, and Hootbot were launched. In 1999, this year was very significant in digital marketing history. Web 2.2 was launched. Mario? Nineteen ninety six. No, however. Oh. However, digital advertising changed in two thousand. The two thousand saw a pair of social media and MySpace, both of which were minor milestones of for marketing. And what are the five DS of digital marketing? Digital devices, at the first one, laptops, desktop, smartphone, tablet, smart TV, wearable device, and gaming device. Digital platform, social media, search engines, websites. A digital media, online ads, social media, a marketing, and SMS, email marketing, and digital data, apps, contacts, forms, and surveys. And the last one, digital technology, artificial intelligence, intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality. And okay, thank you. I have a question for your group. What are cookies? What is the purpose of cookies? What do they do? You used it in your presentation. The cookies type of, for example, information when you, is, is stay in the page. For example, I put uh, uh, in Google, uh, I want to buy a, a cell phone. In the page, one cookie save, I want to buy a, a cell phone. So the, uh, with the social media, all platforms are connected. So, uh, currently appears in Facebook, new cell phones, new models of cell phones. So because you look or you search in your, in your cell phone, you want to buy a new cell phone. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Good explanation, group number one. You were prepared. <laughs> Everybody be aware, I'm going to be asking you questions on your presentation, just like I did right now with group number one, right? And they were ready to answer. So very good job. You have to be very well informed when you do an exposition. <laughs> so group number one, even though you said you weren't ready, but you delivered. You created the content. You presented it in a very good order. Information was clear. And you were informed about what you were talking about, right? So very good, room number one. Thank you. Good job. Now we're going to move forward. And we're going to hear room number two. Let's see who is in room number two. I have um, Nelson Gavarrete, Olga Marleni, and Silvia Suleima, please. Okay, teacher. I'm trying to change my screen. Okay. Okay. Number one. Um, as an introduction is goes back to the beginning of the relationship to need to offer and sell products has reached the digital eruption that we are experiencing today at the beginning of the 90s of the 90s, the 90s. <laughs> yeah of the 90s investment in online marketing was almost nil. In a matter of a single year from the years 1994 to it increased more than $300 million. And already in 2014, 2014, online advertising investment reached a uh, 121 million but in recent years the world of marketing has 
undergone a total information and not only due to the appearance of the internet, the popularization of online media or the, the existence of new technologies, but also consumers and in the way of convincing them. But in recent years, the world of marketing has undergone a total transformation. Um, and not only... Olga. Ah, <laughs> Sorry. Eh, no. So let's continue with Nelson Gabarrete. Hello, Miss. I'm sorry, no can say the last presentation for the poll. Okay. Okay. Ah, pero ahí está su. Está Abraham Apple. Está the introduction of the Apple in the two thousand one, as well as the Tunes Music Store. And its online application, the revolution, the music industry by promoting digital music to so produce, create, and support an emerging ecosystem for the sale and culture of music over the internet. With the advantages that it has, uh, for example, the you say, uh, units will learn. Press in the file against music, piracy, for example. The, the company was also a partner in the sharing in the here for a smartphone and tablet computing with the introduction of the iPhone in, in 2007 and the iPod in 2000. Then after Nokia, provision flow, flow DC to consumer electronic device has uh, reserved the way manufacturers the world and produce mobile device go by and for their innovation and technology, the profiles articular the style and we ask the flowing extra question. Who does not have a smartphone today? It is uh, does not have to be a phone, but the smartphone has uh, become the inseparable the com the companion of millions and millions the people around the world. Okay. Around the world, around the world, no, around the world, Nelson. <laughs> around the world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. And the last person in the group? Uh, the following information is about the evolution, the digital marketing of Facebook. Okay. Uh, with over a million active advertisers and uh, 25 million PMS page advertiser and market, marketers account for much for much of the social net network success and future. Um, evolution over time of Facebook, for example. Um, 2006, the first flyers are launched on Facebook. The price of the advertising format of this advertising format started from $5 onwards. Uh, 2007 launch of self-service at uh, a platform, uh, Facebook page. Uh, 2008 in August, launch of interactive ads uh, available of, on the Facebook's home page. And, 2009, Facebook launched language and geographic location based targeting for advertisers. 
Um, for example, in uh, 2011 presentation of the sponsored stories, Facebook Studio uh, launch a new category of broader audience segmentation. Only teacher. Okay, question. Question number one. I have two questions for this group. Question number one is for Nelson. Nelson, what is Apple promoting? What is Apple Hello? promoting? You were reading and I want you to tell me what is Apple promoting? De lo que usted leyó de Apple, what is Apple promoting? Well, Apple, I'm sorry, no, no. Ustedes estaban leyendo sobre la evolución de la compañía Apple. What do they yes. promote? Usted dijo, they promoting, ¿qué cosa? Dije, perdón, sorry. Uh -huh. de lo, usted tiene la información de la que estaba leyendo, ¿verdad, Nelson? Ahí hay una parte donde usted sí. menciona, promoting, what are they promoting? Oh, esa no, bueno, que yo la saqué esa parte, mis... Está bien, es de lo mismo que ya dijo usted, Nelson. Así que tienen que tenerlo ahí. Es de lo mismo que usted ya dijo. Usted dijo, Apple is promoting. What are they promoting? Mm. Teacher, uh, yes? Apple promote hardware and software. Correct, Olga, very good. Nice job working in a team. And question number two, what was the first launch of Facebook? What was the first launch, Silvia? The flyers. In what year? In 2006. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. That's a group job. That's what we call teamwork. Trabajo en equipo, right? That's what we call a teamwork. If somebody is not ready, somebody else jumps in and we help, right? De eso se trata, de apoyarnos. Very good job. Room number two, you did a good, good exercise on this part. We're going to go with room number three. In room number three, we have, no, we have room number four. We have mm -hmm. Diana Elizabeth, Juan Carlos Rivas, and Wendy Maribel. Hey, teacher. I'm going to share the screen. Okay. Um, okay. Digital marketing. A great digital marketing strategy has become the cornerstone of success for a lot of brands and businesses. We can trace the beginnings of the revolutionary form of the customer engagement all the way back to the late 80s and early 90s. The history behind how we come to engage in the online realm is fascinating. The beginning. Sorry. Sorry, Miss Ali. Okay. Some of the most important dates of digital marketing were First use of the term digital marketing was in 1990. Launch of the first search engine archive was 1990. First click, 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 clickable, 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 clickable. So first clickable web out banner was 1994. Launch of Yahoo was 1995. First e-commerce transaction over net market was 1994. Launch of first social media site, sixdegrees.com was 1997. With Birth of Google was 1998. Launch of Microsoft Web Search Engine 
was 1998. And after that, things didn't stop. They just evolved, evolved more and more. At the present, <clears throat> today, 65% of individuals' digital media time is spent on a mobile device. The digital advertising industry is now valued at around 200 billion, with Google AdWords accounting for 96% of the company's revenue. With an estimated 3 billion online users, social network has led the digital marketing revolution. The rise of bloggers and Instagram has resulted in $1 billion industry for influencers, which are anticipated to grow. Digital marketing is expected to grow in the coming years with many new developments and changes in this exciting industry. That's it, thank you. Very good. That information was very well thorough and explained. I have three questions for this group. Okay, first question. When was the first use of the digital marketing term? When was the first time it was used? In 1990. All right. What is the digital value? What is the value of digital advertising industry nowadays? Wendy or Juan Carlos? What is the value nowadays of the di digital advertising industry? Repeat the question, teacher. <laughs> what is the value? What is the value of the digital advertising industry nowadays? Two hundred millions. Yes, correct. Thank you, public. <laughs> Very good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. It shows that you're paying attention. I think that's perfect. Don't worry. And number three, question number three. Microsoft Web Search Engine. When was it launched? When was the Microsoft web search engine launched? In 1998. 1998. 1998. 1998. <laughs> yes, that is correct, room number three. Very good job, thank you. Thanks. All right, and now we're gonna go with room number four. In room number four, no, this was room number four. We're gonna go with room number five. Here we have Jorge Humberto, Juan de Dios, and Tatiana Michel, please. Can you see my presentation? It's loading. Yes, now we can. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are talking about the evolution of digital marketing. Uh, the 90s mark, uh, the beginning of such an evolution of marketing during which search engines, social networking sites, web and banners, e-commerce website were born. It was also during this period that CRM tools became popular and were updated by companies such as SAP, Oracle, Ban. During that period, CRM tools were primarily used to track inventory and customer interaction. Uh, we, uh, let's, well, I'm going to talk about the, the some important achievements. Uh, for example, fair use of the term digital marketing, it was in 1980, a launch of the fear search engine, Archie, it was in 90, this is an important achievement of 90s. And mm -hmm. that is, uh, since that, that, that day uh, we are using until now. Okay. Uh, we have the Archie, it was in 1990. Uh, 1990. 1990, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. First clickable web and banner, it was in 1994. A launch of Yahoo, it was in 1995. 
Uh, the first e-commerce transaction uh, through net market, it was in 1994. A launch of the first social networking site. It was a uh, six degrees.com. It was in 90, 90, 97. <laughs> the birth of Google, it was in 1998. And the launch of the Microsoft Web Search Engine, it was in 1998. And my partners, partners going to talk about uh, a very famous company and this is Coca-Cola. Coca All right. Good evening. Hello. Uh, we, I, I want to talk about the evolution of Coca-Cola company. Uh, when we imagine the Coca-Cola company, we uh, almost think they, they, most of the time, uh, take a good decision. All, always, we can, we can think, but not all the decision that they do was so good. Uh, one, of the, one of the most memorable Coca-Cola TV commercial was in 1990, Northern Lights. We can remember the the polar bear like like the, in the picture in the in the left, and that was a, a good idea. And most of the people can remember that that imagine and that, that and that adds. However, there are other decisions that 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 could be a bad decision. Like in 1985, they tried to change the formula of, of the Coca-Cola and was a, a terrible decision. Just for 79 days, they, they had to, to come back to the original formula because the people doesn't like that 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 new new flavor, and that was the the reason they they come back. Uh, people was uh, angry for or strongly. Uh, how do you say? Uh, Maybe it's not angry the the word, but they don't like the, that flavor. Mm -hmm. They didn't in past. They didn't like. Okay, now my my partner continue with the presentation. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, Joy Tipodi, chef marketing and commercial officer for Coca Cola, say the company had more than four billion for its marketing budget in 2011. The major expended pay of as Coca-Cola was named marketer of the year in 2011 by AGAGE. In summary, Coca-Cola company has changed over the years and the evolution has affected its businesses. This has been one of the most successful marketing companies in history. Very good. Thank you. Nice, rule number five. You did an excellent job with your presentation. Very well detailed. And you were following, I noticed that you were not reading it specifically. The three of you were trying to say the information in your own words. You were only reading some pieces, but you were trying to use your own language. So that's the whole point of these presentations that you can practice your own way of saying the things, right? Very good job. Now, I have three questions for you guys. Number one, Thank you. when were e-commerce websites born? When were the first e-commerce websites born? When were they born, the first e-commerce websites? Mm 
In the 90s. Exactly. Yes, we're not looking for a specific date, just the years. So yes, in the 90s. Number two. Well, it's just two. Yeah. When did when did Coca-Cola ever try to change the formula for the first time in life? 1985. Exactly, 1985. Very good. And the last one, when was the first transaction in net market? It was in 1994. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, room number My five. problem with the numbers. <laughs> I really have a problem. <laughs> I will give you exercises with numbers, guys. I see that you guys forget. <laughs> you see, the thing with numbers is that we don't really use them. Well, we think we don't use them frequently, but in reality, we use them almost every day, right? So we can do exercises practicing numbers, don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so thank you everyone who participated in this exercise. You delivered, entregaron la información, desarrollaron el ejercicio y utilizaron sus propias versiones. Si fijaron, todos estaban hablando del mismo tema. Cada quien tuvo un approach diferente, right? So very good job, everyone. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move forward. Just a minute. Where is the student's manual? Here it is. Okay, so now we're going to talk, to talk about some examples of popular search engines. I think this question, it's, there are, I think there are not many options, but I believe there are options that I don't know. Popular search engines that are not Google. What other search engines do you know besides Google? Yahoo. Yahoo is another one. Uh -huh. They use Bing. Do they use Bing? Bing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yahoo is for Bing. What other one do we know? Opera. Opera is another search engine, correct? What other one? There is another one that is very Ari. famous. I'm sorry? Firefox. 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 That's true. What was the other one, Juan Carlos? Microsoft Bing. Safari. Safari, uh -huh. that's true. Microsoft, Bing is from Yahoo. Uh -huh. Microsoft is, they used to have Internet Explorer and I think they call it Edge nowadays, right? Edge. Uh -huh. yes, Edge. Edge. Yes. is Microsoft Bing. Oh, all right. So Bing belongs to Microsoft then. So they have two, Edge and Bing. Accurate. Okay. Yeah, Firefox is another one. They mentioned it already. So... Which one is your preferred search engine? Inter Which is the one? Internet, Internet Explorer. Mm, that doesn't exist. When do we have Edge or Bing? Edge uh, or Bing. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. So, which oh is God. your favorite search engine, guys? For me, Chrome. Chrome. Yeah. Chrome. yeah for me, it's Chrome, as well. I think for Chrome me, is. Chrome. Yeah, it's the most useful one, in my opinion. So let's go with question number two. Who wants to read it, please? Who wants to read question number two? Me. What read is a it, good please? way to attract possible customers to the website of your product or service? Okay, everyone, imagine you have a product or service. Or if you have it, as Tatiana, she has a business, right? If you already have it, don't imagine it, just think about it, right? What is a good way to attract possible customers to your website or to your uh, network page of your product or your service? Instagram publicity. Instagram publicity, it's a good one. I think they start- I, I'm sorry? We like a bottom uh, to collation in, in advertising. That's true. That's also another version, another option. I believe Instagram charges you like $5 or $10 minimum for advertising, right? Yes. Yes. So it requires money. <laughs> I don't know how many days do they give you the advertising for that price. Okay. What other ideas do you have to advertise your product or your service? What other, what other options would you guys do? to advertise your product or your service? 
maybe WhatsApp, it can be another good option and it's free. Yeah, WhatsApp. Have you ever thought uh, no, mm -hmm. sorry. No, go ahead, Diana, please. Another thing that is really popular right now is to collaborate with influencers on TikTok, TikTok or Instagram. Correct. That's another trendy, trendy fashion to collaborate. They they have followers, you have product, right? You give them some, you can give them money or you can give them gifts depending on what they ask and they promote your product or your service, right? Um, how, we uh, give away some. Giving giveaways, correct, Anna? That's a great idea nowadays, giveaways. I think here in El Salvador, they are not so popular because sometimes people never, never, nobody wins. <laughs> you never see the winners, right? Um, but in other countries, like in the States, giveaways are a very good source for marketing. <laughs> and it's really useful. All right. So we have a conversation in here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna need two people. One is gonna read Samuel, the other one person is gonna read Isabel. Remember, we read three times each conversation, so we're gonna need six volunteers total. Okay. Round number one. In the first round, we have Cristia, you will be Isabel, and Juan de Dios, you will be Samuel. Round number two, Claudia, you will be Samuel. Wendy, you will be Isabel. And we need two more volunteers for the last round. Okay. And Diana, you will be Samuel. And I need one more volunteer for the last round. Diana, you can read Samuel and Olga, read Isabel, please, in the last round. Let's begin, please. The context manager revises the list of keywords, didn't he? The list of keywords? I thought you did. I thought you did it, didn't you? Actually, I didn't. I will tell him to revise, revise the keywords before we actually include them in the site. We won't have problems later with search engine optimi optimization. Will we? Yes, it will be very troublesome troublesome later for the specialist. It's good that I asked you, isn't it? Very good. Round number two, please. The content manager revised the list of keywords, didn't he? The list of keywords? I throw you did it, didn't you? Actually, I didn't. I will tell him to revise the keywords before we actually include them in the site. We won't have problems later with search engine optimization, will we? Yes, it will be very humble, tomblesome letter for the specialist. It's good that I asked you, isn't it? Thank you. And round number three, please. Yeah. The content manager revisited the list of keywords, didn't he? The, the list of keywords, I doubt you did, I didn't do. Actually, I didn't. I will tell him to revise the keywords before we actually include include them in the site. We won't have problems later with search engine optimization, will we? Yes, it will be very troublesome. 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 Later for the specialist, it's good that I asked you, isn't it? Very good. Thank you, everyone who participated in this one. We're going to answer the four questions we have here. The first one, it's according to the conversation, right? Per the conversation. The content manager revised the list of keywords. You have to complete the sentence. <laughs> Correct. Revise the keywords, didn't he? Number two, I thought you did it.
Actually, it, I didn't. Didn't. Okay. Didn't you, Seria? Yes, I thought you did it. Didn't you? Mm -hmm. Didn't you? Correct. Number three, we won't have problems later with search engine optimization. Will we? Will we? Correct. Number four, it's good that I asked you. Isn't it? Isn't correct. it? Perfect, yes. You got them correct. Now, we're gonna watch a video right now. I'm gonna share it with you guys. And we're gonna do exactly as we did yesterday, okay? We're gonna watch it first just to see what's going on, what, it, what are they talking about, what's happening in the video. And then we're going to watch it again, and you are going to feel a task. Right? So first, just, we just watch it and pay attention to talk about it later. Okay? Let me know when you're seeing my screen, please. Yes, teacher. Yes, no, teacher. Okay. Good. I'm Miley Oye. I'm a developer programs tech lead at Google. I've been at Google since 2005, working with our search and our webmaster tools teams. But if I were a consultant for your startup, here's all the advice I would give in under 10 minutes. This talk is aimed for companies who have their main content below about 50 pages. For those sites that are looking to rank for thousands of unrelated keywords, like an e-commerce site or a news agency, you might want to invest more time with SEO. My objective for this talk is to provide you the basics in the most efficient manner possible and to help you feel assured that you're not doing something totally wrong related to search and last to provide pointers for more information. The first thing to do with your new domain is to decide whether you want visitors to see the dub 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 version or the non dub 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 version at which point you'll 301 redirect users from your non preferred to your preferred version. Now, many large corporations like Google and Facebook actually keep the dub 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 version, but you're free to do whichever you want. The reason why we use a 301 and not a 302 is because a 301 is a permanent redirect, and that way it signals to applications like search engines to actually transfer all those indexing properties from the source to the target. The next step is to verify ownership of your site in the Webmaster Tools. And I don't just say this because I work with a team, but I think this is really valuable. I encourage you to sign up for email forwarding. Email forwarding allows Google, when we have any message for you, like we think you might have been hacked, or we think your site is hosting malware, or we're having trouble crawling your site and we found a high number of unreachable URLs. So any of those messages can be forwarded to Google Webmaster Tools, and if you have email forwarding enabled, can be forwarded directly to the inbox that you check every day. One more research tip is to perform a background check on your domain. For example, if it was previously owned by spammers, then you're not going to rank very well now. So one good way to check is to look at the keywords listed in Webmaster Tools for your site and see if you see any unwanted words there. Also, um, you can see if you're indexed by performing a site colon search with your domain. And if you see any problems, the webmaster guidelines can be found at this URL. And if you have questions about penalties or reconsideration requests in that entire process, uh, my friend Tiffany Oberoi has a great interview listed here. I'd like to highlight the Fetch as Googlebot feature in Webmaster Tools. It's a great feature because you give us a URL and then we'll perform a crawl as Googlebot and you can see exactly whether we've been redirected appropriately and exactly what content we download. An additional part of this feature, and I think this is really useful, is that you can actually tell us to not just crawl, but to submit to index for that URL. And this way, anytime you update a page or you create an entirely new page, you can trigger that entire process to happen by Google and have it available to searchers even faster. My next advice is to include analytics code whether it's Google Analytics or another provider. Now you wanna start collecting this data even if you're not ready to use it because once you hire someone, it's better to have some historical information about your site. The next part is the strategy in your site design. You'll want to create a great experience for all your visitors and their different personas. So consider your customers, also your investors, and what content will they see, or even the press. Some questions to ask when it comes to site strategy are utility. Does our site design meet the needs of each persona? And does each persona have a great experience? 
Navigation. If a searcher lands on a child page, and that's common with search results, uh, they don't funnel directly through your home page all the time, can they figure out where they are? And can they easily navigate to where they want to be? Another question is about whether or not your site is focused. Does each page contain one logical topic that's obvious to visitors? It's common with startups that, because you're tied on time and resources, that as you collect more information, you just add that to existing pages and make those extremely long, forcing users to scroll. Um, but instead, think about your site design and if that should be broken up into separate pages. The next step, and this is especially helpful for startups, is to define your conversion. Whether that means for group foo of visitors to sign up for the newsletter or to contact your biz dev lead or to try your product, you want to have a relevant conversion possible on every page, like a call to action, and not force users to make extra clicks. All right, up until this point, what have you found about this video? What did you understand? What is it about? Nothing. <laughs> uh, the the woman is a uh, is a uh, web webmaster, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and, and she is giving or trying to translate the experience that she get from two thousand five. Mm -hmm. Giving to us some advice how to how to Google works. Exactly. She's talking about how Google works for people who has a startup, para la gente con emprendimientos, right? What else? She's a consultant and she's giving you advice so you can start your page and giving you different tips of how you can start it and without the knowledge of, of using that. Okay a page like this. Very good, that's right. Olga, please. Thank you, teacher. She gave us the correct steps for a good marketing in a good company online. Exactly, she's giving us steps. Do any of these steps that she mentioned sound familiar to you guys? Do any of the steps she mentioned sound familiar she was, to you? She was talking about the keywords mm -hmm. and in the importance to include analytics code, code mm -hmm. 301. Yeah, versus 305. And finally, versus the last portion. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the last point she mentioned, y es por la que les estoy preguntando, do any of these words sound familiar to you? It's because we read about this yesterday. This is basically what we were talking about yesterday. In the last portion we did in yesterday's class, we were reading about the strategies, right? So that's basically what she's saying in more, obviously in more, more expert words, more technical words, right? So now we're going to do a reading exercise again, and we're going to see in your opinion, guys, is there only one way to do digital marketing? Or how many ways do you think there are to do digital marketing? There are many, many ways, teacher, because social media, it, on TV, for example, it, mm -hmm. we can use uh, several ways to, to to advertise. Yes, like um, I think it was Mario who was mentioning at the beginning of the class. Mario was saying that some websites, they use cookies, right? To gather your information and then they sell your information to other um, applications that they see what you need or what you want. They spy on you basically. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna read about the net nine different types of digital marketing, right? Nine different ways of digital marketing. While we are reading, I want you to think advantages and disadvantages of each one. Van a buscar las ventajas y desventajas de cada tipo de marketing del que vamos a leer. ¿Y cuál se ajustaría mejor a ustedes? Which one would be better for your company or your business if you had one, right? 
So let's begin in here. Um, let's be going. I need someone to read the introduction and then we're gonna need for section number one, I'm gonna need two people. Okay, so right now three. We have types of digital marketing. For the introduction, we're gonna ask Olga to read the introduction. Jorge read um, number one up until the pros. Okay, from the beginning until pros. And then Christia, you're going to read number one cons until the end. Then Claudia Melendez, you will read number two until pros. Juan de Dios, you're going to read cons on number two until the end. All right, let's begin, please. Olga, you're in mute. Okay, types of digital marketing. There are many types of digital marketing that you can leverage to increase your audience reach. Using multiple digital marketing channels can help you create a world rounder, a strategy that will yield the best results. To help you determine which digital marketing strategies may work best for your business, here are six of the most effective types of digital marketing. Thank you. Okay, determine. No, it's determine. Determine. We'll help you determine. Determine. Mm -hmm. determine. All right, let's begin. Number one, please. Content marketing. Content marketing refers to informational, valuable content like blog, post, how to videos, and other instructional materials. This type of marketing helps you connect with your audience and answer their questions. It can also help to generate leads and close sales. Content should be published regularly with the target audience in mind. Ideally, your brand would become a trust voice within the industry by publishing quality, reliable content you, you want your audience to come to your fears for information on the latest industry trends. Pros, it's free of cost. Content is a highly versatile option. It allows you to build your brand by educa educating, entertaining, and inspiring the audience. It fools all the other types of digital marketing. Very good. Thank you, Jorge. So these are the advantages or the pros of this type of marketing, content marketing, right? This one is specific when you are advertising information, right? Not a product or a service specifically, but you you, pre you create a specific information and you start advertising it, right? Um, Jorge was reading the advantages. It's free of cost, so you can do advertising without having money, right? It's a versatile option because you can you decide what you put in the content, right? And it fuels all the other types of digital marketing. This is like the base. Content marketing is como la base, el nivel uno de marketing, right? Let's see the disadvantages. Let's read the cons, please. Cons, the competition is high. It takes a lot of time to run original, original, originically, organically, organically. I, I don't know. Teacher. Yeah, organically. Organically for target key, keywords. Consistency and high quality is vital to be effective. Vital. Vital to be effective. Your content must be must meet your customer requirements while branding and achieving 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 your business targets. The next step: designing a simple and effective content strategy is the key to a promising beginning. 
choose four to five core themes considering the customer needs and what your brand wishes you communicate to the masses. Decide the formats, video, audio, articles, or others. Finalize the channels you will use the post each piece of content. Thank you. So Christian was talking about the disadvantages or the cons of the content marketing, content advertising, right? First of all, the competition is ferocious, right? It's a lot of competition. And then consistency. If you're going to do content marketing or content advertising, you have to be constant in your publications, right? In the things that you announce. And then she was talking about the steps that you have to follow to create a strategy, all right? So basically, number one, content marketing. We have the advantages, disadvantages. And how can you start? Como pueden iniciar hacer content marketing, for example, right? And it says choose four to five core themes. Escojan cuatro o cinco temas que son base los principales de su mercadeo, and you go from there, right? Then second step, you decide if you want to publish a video, or you want to publish an audio, or you want to publish an article, depending, right? And then finalize the channels. What kind of channels you're going to announce yourself on? Very good, Christia and Harvey, thank you. Let's check the second type of advertising, search engine optimization. Juan de Díaz, please. Oh, ¿quién era la primera parte? Me. Okay, please. Search engine optimization. Is EO is the strategy of creating content in such a way that search engines like Google will rank your page high on the search engine results page. S E R P. Google use algorithms to decide how relevant your page is to, to the keywords that the user is searching, searching for. These algorithms update frequently, and SEO strategies must be adjusted just as regular to remain effective. When done properly, SEO efforts will put your page at the top of the S, S E R P and bring in more organic traffic. Pros, it increases the brand visibility and it is cost efficient compared to PPC. Thank you. Cons, SEO depends on content and test. Google's changing algorithms might come in the way of your efforts. It takes time for SEO to work. The next tips, SEO begin with good content. Follow a good content strategy and do keywords research to discover what people search for. Stay updated on Google's recommendation for content. Beginner up for a plug in that could assist them in optimizing their site. Optimizing. E optimizing their site. EA just for WordPress. Very good, thank you. So the second marketing strategy that they have in the, in the article, search engine optimization, okay? And it says, as a strategy means that you create content in such a way that search engines like Google will rank your page high in the search, right? For example, if you have a web page that sells sunglasses, not these glasses, sunglasses, right? There are thousands of web pages that sell sunglasses, right? But if you optimize, you create a good strategy for marketing, it's probably that Google will recognize your strategy and it will put it, when people type sunglasses in stores, your company will be the first one to appear in the search engine, right? And it says the advantages that we're mentioning increases the brand visibility because you're gonna be the first page that people will see when they look for something, okay? And it is cost efficient. And then the disadvantages, um, 
again, you have to be constant at updating your content, your technology, right? And Google changed algorithms very fast. They change algorithms like there is no tomorrow. So maybe the strategy that you have today is good, but tomorrow it's gonna be not good because they changed their, their algorithm, all right? So here is the thing. Here's what we're going to do. We have seen two types of marketing strategies. Hemos visto dos tipos de estrategia de marketing hasta ahorita. Content marketing creation or search engine optimization, all right? So what you're going to do right now is that you're going to go to your breakout rooms. You're going to have five minutes for this exercise. And I want you to discuss. Quiero que discutan entre ustedes. I want you to discuss what would be the best strategy o, pueden, o si pueden diseñarla, si no solo mencionar cuál sería. What would be the best strategy for a company that is going to start selling? It's going to start selling coffee. It's going to start selling coffee online. They are not going to have a physical store like Starbucks or Coffee Cup. No, they are only going to be an online store, but they will be a cafeteria. They will be like an online cafeteria. What would be the best strategy that you will design for them? Or what are some tips that you can give to the person? Okay. Todos tienen exactamente el mismo tema. El reto es que ustedes creen una estrategia o mencionen, recomienden qué cosas podría hacer la persona para que su cafetería en línea le dé, le dé éxito, tenga éxito, right? We're going to focus it on El Salvador. Lo vamos a enfocar en El Salvador. Pueden entrar a las salas, tienen cinco minutos. Realmente no van, a, no van a crear conversación ni presentación. Solo van a discutir entre ustedes. Y cuando regresemos, uno de ustedes va, con, va um, a mencionar lo que ustedes discutieron. ¿Ok? You can enter the rooms now. Pueden ingresar a las salas ahorita. Teacher, I don't have break room. Ahorita la voy a poner a usted y a Ana la voy a poner en el room number three. Ya pueden ingresar. Ana y Claudia.
Okay, now that everybody's back, I wanna hear your opinions. What do you think? What would be a good strategy or what are some tips that you can um, offer for a person that is starting a business of online coffee shop, an online cafeteria? Let's hear room number one, please, your ideas. Cristia, Mario, and Norma. Only one okay. person can speak. We, we discussed about the strategy to, to use to uh, increase uh, the size of our, of our coffee in, in the server. Mm -hmm. So we think it's a, a great opportunity to plan um, a car or clean frequently. Okay. So, for example, you buy um, uh, five orders because it's online. Mm -hmm. You will receive in your house, but we we save a, a pot um, in an e car uh, mm -hmm. um, a progress a progress. So, if you buy five five orders, you will receive uh, in the next purchase they have. The house of the order, a bag, a bag of the house, mm -hmm. or you can buy, or, or you can enjoy a coffee with uh, with a dessert. With cake, with, uh, coffee with cake. Okay, very so, good. <laughs> you got a good strategy, good idea. Thank you. Room number one, that was very well. Number two, we have Nelson and Olga Marlene. Okay, teacher. Uh, we consider uh, as step number one will be promote the interaction of online chat with customer to deliver. Okay. And, and number two, we consider is create in social media weekly and change the product on promotion as attractive to the client. Uh, for example, free coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Very good. Thank you, Olga. Okay. That was really good. Those, those were really good ideas for advertising. Thank you. Room number three, we have Ana Raquel and Claudia Melendez, please. Okay. Ana, uh, yes, teacher. Uh -huh. Do you hear me? Yeah. Um, the recommend said uh, buy app and implement a content marketing uh, with teams about health, the coffee benefits, uh, teams about uh, our country produce at an excellent coffee and we must try it. And also create a free website in WordPress or Wix and create their profile in social networks. Very good. Room, room number room number three, it was Anna and Claudia. Very good, ladies. Guys, I'm very proud of you. Estoy muy orgullosa de todos. Están desarrollando súper bien como están expresándose. Very good. Keep on working hard. Están yendo por muy buen camino todos ahorita. Nos vamos a quedar hasta acá por cuestiones de tiempo. Le voy a pasar attendance. Please be ready. And we have Anna Raquel. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia María. Diana Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Jorge Humberto. Present. Thank you. Jose Jonathan. Present. Thank you. Jose Rodrigo. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present. Thank you. Juan de Dios. Present. Thank you. Linda Ivette. Manuel Antonio. María Concepción. Present. Thank you, Maria. Maria Elena. Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gavarrete. 
Present, Miss. Thank you, Norma Carolina. Present, teacher. Thank you, Olga Marlene. Present. Thank you, Silvia Suleima. Present. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Present, teacher. Thank you, and Wendy Maribel. Present, teacher. And Christian Natalie. Right. Thank you, Krista. All right, that's gonna be it for tonight, guys. Go, go to bed, rest, recharge batteries, and I will see you tomorrow for the end of the week. Take care. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye, Have a nice day. everybody. Blessings. Bye. 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 Bye.